If you dream of owning a big house and a nice car, you study hard and slowly climb the ladder with pure effort and determination. But you need not work so hard. There's an easier way to make much more money much, much faster. The door to your success is in making a mobile game, and the keys we will soon discover. But you must be thinking, isn't the market already pretty flooded? The answer is yes, incredibly, but nearly all your competition has failed miserably. Too generous, too original, too honest. There's always more space for those that carefully follow the lessons to come. Just look at the hundreds of best-selling slot machine apps. Each is just a slightly different face to the same basic game, but they're all incredibly successful. Candy Crush makes not one or five or fifty million dollars a year, but over a billion. They're doing something very right. Either Candy Crush is the perfect realization of the art of game design, or it's really good at exploiting your brain. So, what tricks of psychology can we learn from the very best? You will soon find that they are no more difficult than taking candy from a child. If you've ever played these games, you may have noticed that they all have their own currency. Instead of paying real money to save your character's life or change his appearance, you pay with gems or coins or stars, which you first buy with real money. This is no accident. By abstracting real money into made-up currency, players are distanced from the consequences of their choices. I'm not paying $2 for this virtual hat, I'm paying 500 coins, which happen to cost $2. If you don't think anyone could possibly be that stupid, think again. We all do this to some extent when we see a $10 item as simply costing one of these, and not what we're actually paying with, like say an hour of minimum wage work. Casinos use this trick all the time. Paying with tokens feels different than paying with the same amount in dollars. And instead of constantly asking the player to buy this or that with real money, tokens make the occasional moment of weakness enough to make a handsome profit. So instead of selling one life for a dollar, you can sell packs of coins, the cheapest of which is two or five or ten dollars. The player is forced to buy a handful of coins when they only need a few for what they really want. The smartest games multiply this effect to create even more abstraction. In Clash of Clans, you can buy gems, which can be used to buy gold, which you can then use to buy items. The more indirect, the more you collect. Every game has two kinds of players, those that play for free and a tiny fraction that buys enough to make up for everybody else. Your goal is to create as many of that second category as possible. You want them to be dependent on your game for satisfaction. And to do that, you need to create routine. The player who pays a lot is the one who plays a lot, in the morning, on the commute, at the dinner table, everywhere. Reward players for opening your app every day, and create a streak system that gives prizes for playing X amount of days in a row. It doesn't take long before this creates a regular habit, some would say an addiction. And when it does, players can justify paying even more. Sure, I'm spending a ton, but I play this game a lot. And don't let anyone escape your grasp. If you notice a player has taken a break, lure them back with a notification, or two, or thirty. People will happily pay for more levels, spins, and characters. But your ultimate goal is to monetize everything. If you can make your players pay to play, you can also make them pay not to play. If you intentionally create annoyances and time sinks, parts of your game that are no fun but necessary, players will pay to skip them. It may sound ridiculous that someone would pay money to play less of the game they've paid for, but it works. To your players, it will feel like any other purchase, and you will make money even when your game is boring. Win, win. If a casino has $1,000 for prize money, it would usually rather give $110 prizes than a single $1,000 prize. Too much happiness at once leaves a player satisfied, more likely to cash out and leave. So too with your game. Your goal is not to make your players happy, you'll often actually want to do the opposite. 
So space out the enjoyment of your game, enough to keep people interested, but never enough to truly satisfy. And there shouldn't be a single goal, but a series of objectives, always replaced with another when you complete the last. The most successful games aren't stories with an arc and a gratifying ending, but eternal tasks with fake accomplishments. To take this a step further, create many similar games, so there's always another app for people to download. A good developer makes a single game, which they then change just enough to sell again, and again, and again. While the tone of this video is sarcastic, these are all real tactics used by the most popular games. By understanding what they're doing, you're now less susceptible to their deception. But there's also more to this story, because it wasn't always this bad. When the App Store began, it was common to see 5 or $10 games that sold quite well. So what changed in the nearly 10 years since then, and is there a way to return to more honest software? These are big questions we'll explore in an upcoming video, so stay tuned and thanks for watching.